This is Osso Buco alla Milanese, Milan style. It is slow cooked, tender, juicy. The bone marrow has an explosion of happiness and this gremolata that we put right on top at the end. Oh, it's the bomb. You guys need this comfort food on a cold winter night. Let's make it together. To make osso buco Milan style, Milan way, we need osso buco. And you go to the butcher and get beautiful pieces. I got one per person here. Then for the sofrito, we need half onion, one medium sized carrot, and one celery stick, all chopped into pieces. Hopefully the same size if you can. Half a glass of white wine, doesn't matter what white wine you use. One tablespoon of tomato paste, one small can of peeled tomatoes, one liter of beef broth, it needs to be nice and hot, a little bit of flour, 30 grams of butter, extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. For the gremolada, which is what we're gonna do at the end, we need parsley and one lemon. You're gonna love this. And you can serve this on polenta. So I've got uh, some corn flour here. You can serve this on saffron risotto, white rice, or just with bread and that's it. So do whatever you like, serve it as you like it. The first thing we want to do here, okay, and this is very important for the look of the osobugo, is to make some incision here on the osobugo, like on the veins, just a little one. Reason is, because if you don't do that, they will, uh, the, the osobugo, when you cook it, it will go all the way in. And like I said, it doesn't look Amazing. So we just do some incision here. We do one more here. You can use scissors or just a knife. I would say about four or five incisions and then we are ready to go. So now when we cook it, it's gonna stay nice and flat. The other thing we need to do is to crush the peeled tomatoes, okay? So crush it by hand, by using your hand, or just use this, a tomato crusher. If you use your hands, it's actually nicer. Peeled tomatoes are so beautiful. It's a kind of fresher, it gives you beautiful flavors to your pastas, your meat, to your pizza. So here, just fill the tomato. I suggest to use a nice casserole like this, uh, like a Dutch oven. We want to cook this on a slow heat and we don't want to put stress on the meat. Let's start by melting the butter and adding the extra virgin olive oil. In Milan, they love butter, okay? So in south of Italy, we don't use butter much, but in the north, it's very popular. So let's put it in together with a few tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And don't forget, we don't want to rush when we make osso buco. It's a slow cook recipe, okay? This is gonna taste fantastic, okay? Maybe it's not for during the week, but on the weekend, take your time when you make it. Now the butter is melted. And we can add the carrots, celery, and onion. This is asso fritto. Very, very important part. And now we're gonna cook the sofrito for about 10 minutes. Here we have the flour. And what we need to do, we need to put the each osso buco in the flour. And why do we do this? We do this so that we seal it and we keep all the juices from the meat inside the meat. And it also creates a nice cream, if I can call it that way, when we cook it. So here it is, first one. The also burger has the bone marrow here, which is the best part. It's gonna give you so many beautiful flavors, but it needs to cook slowly. What I personally like to do now is to put just a drop, maybe two tablespoons of broth in there. Even one will be enough. And to help to make our ingredients softer. Cover this again, let the steam cook it and uh, become nice and soft. And then we can start assembling our osso buco dish. All right, now we can add the meat. What we do is let's caramelize, if that's the word, the meat. Let's put it in there. 
at this point you also want to add the wine all right so after about five minutes our meat is ready so let's take it out again What we want to do now is we want this wine to evaporate. But can you also see the nice cream? If I can call it creamy, the flour created this. This is beautiful. So once the wine evaporates, oh, I can smell the wine, you will see this will become very creamy. Ah, oh, and it's such an important detail for this dish. Ooh, wow, beautiful flavors. The wine evaporated. So we can start adding one tablespoon of uh, tomato paste. Go in there. Look at the nice color that you got now. You have a nice creamy red color. Now we add one of my favorite ingredients. The peeled tomatoes, crushed by hand. Go in there. Now let's get to know each other. All the ingredients, they need to become friends. They need to play together. They need to give us flavors. What I want to do at this point, I want to add a little bit of salt to the sauce. But don't put too much because the broth is salty. And we're gonna add some pepper, not too much. And again, stir. And now we put the meat back in there, the osobuco. Back in there, gently. Here we go. Put it in there. What I like to do now, before I put the broth, put a little bit of salt on one side of the meat. Now we turn the meat around. The reason why I took out the meat is because I wanted the wine to evaporate and then I wanted to combine the tomato paste and the peeled tomatoes together before I added the meat back in because if the meat was in there, it would have been a bit difficult to combine the ingredients and stir. So that way, I stirred, the sauce was done, and now the meat and the broth can, be, can have a party. And now what I like to do is to put a little bit more salt on top, but don't, don't go crazy because, like I said, the broth is salty. Perfect. And now what we do, we add the broth. What is the broth going to do? It's going to be, give amazing flavors. It's going to reduce, okay, with the tomato sauce. And that's, you know, that's when they actually connect and make love together to give beautiful flavors to the osobuco. And the osobuco will melt in your mouth. It will become so tender. So what we do now, we cover with the lid. And to achieve the perfect osobuco, we want to cook it in here for about one hour and a half. And we can go and turn it every half an hour, turn the meat and stir to make sure the ingredients are not getting stuck to the bottom of the pot. Can you see here what I've said before? The reason why we cut the edges of the meat, you know, the nerves, look, is because the meat is still nice and looks beautiful. See, the meat didn't fold in. See you in one hour. What do we do now? We make gremolada. This is probably the best part of this recipe. We're gonna give beautiful, intense, lemony flavors to the osobugo. To make gremolada, what you need to do is to remove the skin of the lemon, but please avoid to get the white. It's like if you're making a limoncello, okay? Not too much white. If you have good knife skills, you can actually chop the parsley and the lemon together with a knife, but I think it's a lot easier to use the blender, so. Let's put about three, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And now we add the parsley and the lemon. So when I say blend, we don't really want to blend. Like we, we, we want to, see what I want to do here is it's really that. So what we want to do, we've got this on the sides. Let's push them back at the bottom. And we can blend it one more time. Here we go. See, I just basically, I want the lemon 
to crush a little bit more, okay? Just a little bit more. We have plenty of oil, so we don't need any more. I just want to crush that lemon. Yeah, it looks very good to me now. To me, it looks perfect now. We've got the, here we got the lemons. See, they're nice and small. This is what we want to achieve. So I'm gonna get a little bit, taste it. Mm. Beautiful combination. Lemon skin, so good, so good for you. All right, let's just put it here. And we use this once our also buco is ready. So we keep these now on the sides because we're gonna put these right on top of the meat once we serve it in the plate. It's so good. Guys, after one hour, let's remove the lid. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh. The smell is incredible. It stayed in the pot, but now it's time for us to remove the lid because we need to reduce this. We don't want the water, okay? So now look at the piece of meat here, look at that. You can see, Oh my God, it's about to come off the bone. You can see, look, oh my God, it's so tender. I don't want to break it. But you can see how tender it is and how beautiful they look as well. How beautiful they look. Oh, so lovely. And the bone marrow, I cannot wait to eat that. So let's now stir it and let's keep cooking it for 30 more minutes. I've chosen to serve my Osso Buco with polenta. But again, you can do risotto, you can do white rice, or just serve it with some bread. Let's make the polenta. Let's make a polenta. When I put the corn flour in the water, I um, always put a little bit at a time. That's what my grandmother taught me. Also, you don't want to create lumps, okay? And here is our polenta. Beautiful polenta. Let's add some salt and pepper, some pepper. As I stir, I want to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You can put butter, up to you. I do like my extra virgin olive oil in the polenta. That's it. We're ready to serve. Oh, so beautiful. Look at this wonderful osso buco. Oh. Look at that, look at the meat. It's coming off the bone, look. Oh, the bone marrow is gone. Where are you going? Where are you trying to go? Don't escape. Look at that, completely off the bone. Completely. Now it's time to start. Well, what I like to do is to get a little bit of sauce and let's put it on the polenta. Just here on the polenta. Oh, look at the bone marrow there. Look at that. Look at the bone marrow. Oh, it came off. Let's put it here. Perfect. Now we put the rest in. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look how beautiful. This is the best part of the recipe. The gremolada goes on top of the meat. You can actually cook the gremolada with the sauce, but I like it. So here you have a gremolada. And they also buco on polenta. The first thing I want to do here, come on, look, come closer here. The first thing I want to do is to get the bone marrow, all right? And look at that. Comes off easily. Look at that. Look at this beauty. This is gold. This is worth more than gold. Let's have some. Mm -hmm. Melt in your mouth. It's like butter on steroid. <laughs> now we want to cut the meat here. So let's see how tender it is. So we got the polenta. Here we have the meat. So I'm gonna move it on the side. And we cut it. And look, you don't, you don't really need a knife. Look at that. Look at that. I'll show you again. You don't need a knife. Look, ready? comes off, look, it comes off so easily. Let's put some gremolada on top. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. I love the gremolada because the lemons go into your nostril. It reminds you the summer is about to come. It's not far away. It gives you beautiful summery flavors. And then you put this beautiful warm, tender uh, piece of meat in your mouth. Oh, and you get these beautiful flavors from the broth, from the tomato sauce. Ooh, this is so good. This is so good. Mmm. 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 Nice with polenta. Probably even better with rice. Up to you, you choose. I don't know if I prefer the meat, the gremolada. I don't know. These combinations of flavors are just perfect. I love it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna take you all the way to Milan with this dish in one hour and a half. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. This is so good. Osso bugo. Done the right way. <laughs>